Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is a regular weekly message. But this week, we're going to do something just a little different. We're not going to do our usual message. I'll be sharing some intimate stories and that we've never shared before. Our message today is entitled, Standing on the Promises of God. There's an old hymn with the same title, Standing on the Promises of God. The first refrain and second verse goes like this. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Second verse. Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God, I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Simple, simple words, yet powerful, powerful words. That's all you need to know. That's all I need to know. That's all we need to know. That we're standing on the promises of God. Whatever promises God has made, made us, you, me, our families. We can count on those promises. We can depend on those promises because He will never let His promises fail. Therefore, I'm standing on the promises of God. Turn with me, please, to our scripture, Joshua chapter 21, verse 43 through 45. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors, and they took possession of it and settled there. And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as, as he had solemnly promised their ancestors. None of their enemies could stand against them, for the Lord helped them conquer all their enemies. Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came to pass. There's a few words that I would like for you to underline in your, in your Bible. The first one is all. The Lord gave to Israel all. All. Everyone. Every single thing. All. It's all inclusive. Everything. The next word is sworn he had sworn to give that word sworn that's 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 a promise a promise with an oath god sworn and he will not not uh, complete that promise he will not not let it come to pass but he will he will perform the promise that he has, has given. The next one is gave. Underline that. The Lord gave them. And the, and the next one is solemnly promised. Just as he had solemnly promised. That means that, that this is a serious, serious thing to God. And he takes his promises serious. He will not let his word be defiled. He will not let his word not come unfulfilled. But God will perform. He has solemnly promised. The next verse is verse 45. I want you to underline that or highlight, highlight verse 45. It says, Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came to pass. Now, the writer said that not one of the promises failed. Not one of his promises was unfulfilled. But he wanted to reiterate that. He wanted to make a point. So he said it again. He said, everything he had spoken came true. That means that nothing was left undone. Nothing had been left out. Nothing had been forgotten. But everything came true. Every, every promise came to pass. Every good promise. 
So my question to you this morning is, has the Lord given you a personal promise? Maybe it's personal promises. There are many, many general promises in the Bible that they can be claimed by anyone who wants them, such as this one, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That promise can be claimed by unbelievers. You don't have to be a Christian to, to, um, to claim that promise because that is how you become a Christian by claiming that promise right there, believing that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the son of God who came, who bore our sins in his own body, who was beaten and bruised for us, who hung on a tree, who, 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 who the, whole, the whole sins of all the world was placed upon him who was dead and buried and rose to life again on the third day. If you believe that, you will be saved. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. This speaks about rest. Are you a heavy burden? God said, uh, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. So all we got to do is come to Jesus and leave our cares for and he will lift our burdens. Those promises are promises to us. Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has plans to bless us. God has plans to prosper us. God has plans to give us a hope and a future. God has a hope for you. Rest assured, every single one of us, every Christian, every believer, every child of God, God has plans for you. He, he does not say, say that, that, that he has plans for some and not for others. Every single one of us, God has plans, good plans. For he knows that his thoughts that he has for us. For his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And he loves us dearly. That's why he has a hope for us. He has a future for us. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, and I love this one. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, if we slip up, if we fall down, even if we rebel, but we go back to the Lord and we say we're sorry, we confess our sins, he will forgive us of our sins. He will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And that's why we live for the Lord. We live for for holiness, we live for righteousness. First Peter chapter two, verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. So Jesus bore our sins and then he took stripes upon his back. He was beaten that we might be healed. So our healing, is already purchased. Peter sa says, by his wounds, you have been healed. So it's done. It's done already. It's a promise. All we got to do is reach out and grab that healing. These are the general promises that we can claim. It, it can be claimed by any believer. The only stipulation, the only requirement is faith. We got to reach out and grab it by faith. And you see, sometimes what happens is we, we pray for healing and we don't get that instant healing. So we say, well, it's not God's will. Yes, it is God's will. It's God's will that we live in peace. It's God's will that we live in harmony with others. It's God's will that we prosper as our soul prospers. So it is God's will 
Like my 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 wife especially like when, when she has an ache, she has a pain when when, when something we will lay hands on her and sometimes we'll anoint her with oil and, and we'll pray healing and and sometimes she 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 don't get her instant healing. Like the other day she 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 was in bed with um uh, and she was sick with with a fever and we, we went in there and, and and we prayed for her. We laid hands on her. We prayed for her and. Um, I, I came downstairs, I was going to have praise and worship and, and, and do, do some recording and she came downstairs and she was saying, I am healed, I am healed. She, she was like the woman with the issue of blood who said, if I can only but touch the hem of his garment, if I can only but touch the hem of his garment, if I can only but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And that's what she was doing. Celia was saying, if I could, I am healed, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. When she got downstairs and we began to worship, all her sickness just went away like that in a flash. It was gone. And she was completely healed. And that's not the only time. Many times she, she has that. So we gravitate to promises like these, these general promises. Whatever promise that, that we need, we reach out. And we grab that, like, like the one I just said, by his stripes, we are healed. So if we need healing, if you need healing, cling to that promise. Receive it. Grab it by faith. And bring it into your spirit. And receive your healing. I remember last year when I was writing my, my message, thankful and grateful. I was thinking about how the enemy was trying to take out my descendants, both my two children and my two grandchildren, Julianne and Jill. My, my two grandchildren were both in car accidents before they were even born. And serious car accidents where, where the car was actually written off. So as I was pondering this thought, Celia, my wife, came in and said the same exact thought to me. And I thought, that's really strange that she should come and say that same thing to me. So I wrote it down because I thought maybe the Lord might want me to share this sometime in the future. So I wrote it down. And here we are six months later. And I believe that now is the time to share. When, when my youngest or, or my eldest daughter, Julia, um, Brittany, was pregnant with her first child, Juliana. She was driving along a back way on a road and she hit a puddle of water and her car hydroplaned off the road and hit a ditch and she was sliding along and it was right in front of a church and they had an overpass over that ditch. Her car hit the ditch and flipped and landed on, her, uh, on the roof. And Brittany and Juliana still inside her belly, was inside the car. The ambulance came and took them to the hospital where they, they checked, checked out mother, checked out baby, and all was well. And Juliana was born and no problems. All was well, praise the Lord. Then about four and a half years later, Brittany was pregnant with her second child, Jayla. And she was taking Juliana to school. And she stopped at, at a red light. And a young girl came up behind her and slammed into the back of her. Hit Brittany so hard that it rode off the SUV that Brittany was driving. She was driving a Ford Explorer. And it wrote the car off completely. The ambulance came again and, and um, took Brittany to the hospital and checked out mother and baby. And everything was fine. And they sent her home. So she went home and spent the night. And the next day... Brittany felt like something was wrong and she couldn't feel the baby moving. And, and so she, she, she gets on the phone and she calls her mom and her mom advises her, go to the hospital right away. Go get it checked out. So Brittany goes to the hospital and, um, and, and gets checked out. And sure enough, the baby was in peril. So they had to take, take Jayla three weeks early. But praise the Lord, all is well with both mother and daughter. 
And it was so peculiar that both, both my grandchildren, both our grandchildren, were involved in car accidents that completely wrote the cars off. But nothing happened to the children. Nothing happened to Brittany. Because I want it to be understood that it's possible that the enemy was trying to take Brittany out at the same time. It, it, he, he was like trying to kill two birds with one stone. I'm telling you, the enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy our inheritance. That is, our children. According to the worldpopulationreview.com, there are approximately 14 million recorded abortions each year around the world. And yes, you did hear that statistic correctly. I said 14 million recorded abortions. And that doesn't account for those abortions that, that are, are done illegally or done in countries where abortion is illegal. That doesn't count for those abortions that have not been sent in. These are recorded abortions. 14 million sacrifices. Now, here's the thing. As I said, as I was considering these things about the enemy trying to take out my inheritance, take out my descendants, my wife came in and said the same exact thing to me. But then she added, how God is able to preserve my lineage because he has made me a promise. And I'll tell you a little bit of, I'll tell you all about that promise in just a little bit. Then she said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My heart skipped a beat and I got a ting tingly feeling in, in the pit of my stomach because I knew exactly what she was saying. She was saying that we have a promise from God, a promise that cannot be derailed, a promise that cannot be denied because God himself has made that promise. So we will always stand on the promises of God. You see, when, when Brittany was young, I guess she must have been about three or four years old, I was away in St. Augustine on, on a business and my wife had stayed with her, her parents and her sister and, and while, while I was gone. And she, one night she was asleep and she was in bed and, and her sister was in bed and Brittany was lying down between them. And, and um, Celia had this dream where the devil came to her and in the dream he said that he wanted me. And in the dream uh, Celia said, no, no, you cannot have him. And then he turned around and he looked at Brittany and he said, then I'll take her. At that very instant, immediately as those words came out of his mouth in her dream, Brittany woke up as a, as a little baby girl, as a three or four year old, started screaming, Mommy, Mommy, don't let the bad man get me. Mommy, Mommy, don't let the bad man get me. And, and it, it woke Celia up out of that dream and woke up um, her, her sister and she said that, that you could feel the Hair. It was so tangible and the, the hair was standing up on the back of, of their necks and immediately she began to rebuke this, the, 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 that, that demonic spirit and she began to, to sing and praise and worship the Lord and, and call in the name of Jesus. And, and after a while, the peace of the Lord entered that room uh, and, and they were able to go back to sleep again. But that was so strange that at the immediate time that he said he, he's going to take her, Brittany then woke up screaming, do not let the bad man get me. About five or six years ago, Ari, our youngest daughter, went through a terrible bout of anxiety and depression while she was in, in university. She even had thoughts of suicide. Suicidal thoughts plagued her. Her mother was her lifeline. She would, whenever those panic attacks would hit her, she would, and they would just come out of the blue. No rhyme, no reason, they would just come out of the blue. And she would get on the phone with her mother. 
and her mother would try to walk her through it. And, and so sometimes Ariane would be, because would, would, this, this was the kind of relief that she would have, that she would get up and she, she would begin to walk, not knowing where she was going. I, I don't believe she even cared where she was going. She just needed to walk. And she would get on the phone and she would call her mom. And her mom would try to walk her through it and try to calm her down. And then once, um, once she, she got her calmed down, then we could figure out where she was and we would go and we would get her. One time in particular, she, she, she had this anxiety and, and a panic attack. And it was so, so bad that she began to walk, not knowing where she was going because she needed that relief. And I, I, I don't know what relief it, it got her, but she, she would walk and walk, not knowing where she was going. And by the time that uh, her, her mom figured out where she was, she was at this intersection about the cross. And it was um, a very, very busy intersection with cars just just flying through, flying through. And, and so her mom was able to convince her to turn around and go back in the opposite direction to a spot where it was safe. And, and then she called me and I jumped in my car and I drove over there to pick Ariana up. And I brought her back to my office and she stayed there with me until um, I went to lunch and then I brought her home. And then, and then uh, I left her there with her mom. But these are some of the things that happened. One, one other time, Ariane was unpacking the dishwasher and, and the spirit of a, a panic attack and depression, a spirit of depression just came down on her so bad that that the knives then began to look really good to her. And, and then thoughts of just ending it all started to flutter. And uh, she had to walk away from that. And, and, um, and, and she, she went to, to her mother and, and uh, her mother was able to talk her through it. You know what? The prayers, the prayers of Almighty God, those, those days, were, were really, really rough days. I remember um, days that, 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 that Ariane was just so, so out of it, so, so depressed. And only her mother could get through to her. So our family did this. Uh, well, well we, we did natural, we did natural supplements and essential oils and, and, for, for the physical, while we battled in a spiritual for our daughter. But we made sure that, that, that she had tools that she could use. We downloaded um, um, sounds and, and whatever it was that we could do to help her in the physical while we battled for her in the spiritual. Then our family, we, we always do this 21 day prayer and fast and we, we were doing a 21 day prayer and fasting and and um, and Ariane felt like we needed to do a 40 day prayer and fasting. I'm like, 40 days. 40 days is a long time. But we knew that, that, that it was coming from the Lord. So us and including Ariane, we, we did this 40 day fast. And, and Ariane did did um, 10 days of that on nothing but water, just plain water, 10 days of water. And at the end of that 40 days, Ariane was freed from that spirit of anxiety, from that spirit of depression, from that spirit of suicide. And yes, sometimes she, she'll, she'll get a little anxious now. I get a little anxious now. But the, it's, it's nothing compared, it's just reasonable anxiousness. Although the Lord said, be anxious about nothing, right? We're not to be anxious, but in everything, in prayer and supplication. So, so Ariane has been delivered, but she had to battle for it. She battled in prayer because she wanted to be free. And so she gave up and she battled in the spiritual and she was free. So now, backing up a few more years, as I was a child, a young teenager, I used to attend church. I, 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 was, I got saved and, and uh, I was serving the Lord. And 
the youth pastor, his son and I, we, we became really good friends and, and every Wednesday night I, I would go. And then they got transferred to another church. And when they got transferred, I just kind of lost interest and I, I stopped going to church. I got into bad company and I just backslid and joined the army and backslid even further. And, and um, I was so far away from God that people would have thought that I would never be able to find my way back. And that's true. I would not have been able to find my way back. But God, God, although I walked away from him, he never walked away from me. And in the back of my mind, you know, I always thought that I want to be a Christian one day. Just not now, but one day I want to be a Christian. So one night I was watching Christian TV. By this time I, I was married and I had our first daughter, Brittany, and she was probably about two years by then. And I was watching Christian TV and I, ded I rededicated my life to the Lord. Just lying there in my bed. I, I, I rededicated. Then a few nights later, I woke up in the middle of the night. And as I was laying there, I was thinking, trying to remember all of the scriptures that I, I learned as a kid. All uh, and how to pray. And I couldn't remember the scriptures and I didn't really know how to pray. And I was trying to struggle through it. And I was trying to learn how, how to worship all over again. And I was kind of having a good time trying to, because all of this was, was like new to me all over again. It was new to me, but I, I wanted it. I wanted to know how to pray. I wanted to know scripture. I wanted to know how to worship. And then all of a sudden, it was like this presence was just there over me. And it seemed to be a huge hulking presence that was like towering over me. And it was like, like just, just hate. Just hate was pouring out of it. And it was like it was glaring down at me. And the fear that came over me was like terror. And I was, I was panicking because um, the... the, the this huge thing, and I was too afraid to open my eyes. But then I was too afraid to keep my eyes closed. So I was between a rock and a hard place. Fear just overcame. And, and so the fear of keeping my eyes closed overcame. And I flung my eyes open, and I looked to see what it was that was towering over me, just staring down at me. And as I opened my eyes to look, there was nothing there. But the presence was still there. And I could still feel the hate. And I could still feel the, the, this, the, this hulking, whatever it was, over me. And I slammed my, my eyes shut again. And I began to scream out in my mind, Lord Jesus, you got to help me. you got to help me. you got to come now. I even tried to remember 23rd Psalm. And, and I didn't know anything about rebuking spirits or whatever. And, and it was just a terrible... And then I felt two hands slipping under me. That's when the panic set in. Two hands like, like you're going to lift up a person or a baby. That's how it was. And I felt those hands sliding under me. And when it was about to lift up, I was crying out, Lord Jesus, you got to help me. you got to help me. you got to come. you got to come to my rescue. And I could feel another presence. Just, just, just come into the room from, from where the door was at. And this other presence was like, it was like sucked out. Like smoke being sucked out of a room. It was like, and it was gone. And this other presence, I could just feel it coming, coming along. And it came over to my side of the bed. And to me, it was so real that I slipped over to give that presence a place to sit down. And I felt, I wasn't dreaming, I was awake. I felt the weight of somebody sitting on the side of my bed. And then I felt a physical hand physically rest on my chest. And I heard a voice, a physical voice. It wasn't a thought in, in my mind. It was an audible voice. Now whether this voice was only in my spirit or only in my mind or only in, in, in my heart, I do not know, but it was an audible voice voice and this audible voice said to me tonight you're truly saved and I, I did not open my, my eyes and I did not say anything and it the, 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 the presence didn't say anything else I believe it was the Lord Jesus and it, it just stayed there for, for a while and then it just kind of 
faded, faded, and, and then it was gone. But the peace, the peace that it left, like, like all fear was gone. It was only peace and serenity there in the room. And, um, and I, I, I remember that hot, hot tears was building up in my eyes and I could just feel them rolling down on the sides of my face. And at that time, I, I was one of those uh, hardcore kind of guys that I didn't believe in crying and I didn't believe that men should cry. Crying was for sissies and for women. Yet those tears just shamelessly rolled down the sides of my face and they were hot. I remember that so well. They were so hot. And the next morning, I, I, I didn't tell Celia because I, I didn't know what to tell her. I mean, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. But she, she told me that um, at that time, she, she had woken up too and she was afraid. Like, like, like she, she felt like something there was there and she was afraid as well. And so when that spirit was there hulking over me, and I couldn't remember how to pray and, or, or, or worship her. You better believe that I learned how to pray at that time. Like my platoon sergeant used to say, he used to say, get it done, a quick fast and a hurry up. Well, that's what I did with my prayer. And desperations will make you learn how to pray, pray really quick. But the enemy knew that I had a call in my life, even if I didn't know it. Even if, if, if um, I had no clue, the enemy knows when, when there's something about to happen. Just think about this. When God was about to raise up uh, a deliverer for, for, for the Israelites when they were in Egypt, what happened? All the, the, the babies, all the baby boys were killed because the enemy knew a deliverer was coming. He didn't know who it was. He didn't know what, it, but a deliverer. When, when the Lord Jesus was born, another deliverer, what happened? All the baby boys were killed. So the enemy knows when, when, when something is about to happen. He might not know what, but he know because things happen in the spiritual. Things that we cannot see, but spiritual beings can see. So the enemy's job is to stop and to prevent any promise that God has made from happening. He tries to come and he tries to discourage us. He tries to derail our promise. But nobody, nothing can prevent the promises of God. Nothing or no one. Be assured of that. You see, even though the enemy has plans to derail, to, to discourage, plans to, to, to stop our promises, God has other plans. I know the plans I have for you, the Lord says. One night, I had a dream. This is years now after I had been saved. And I was outside and I was looking up into the sky and I saw light and it was small and I looked at it, 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 it caught my attention, and it kept getting bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter until, until it came into view, and then it came closer and closer and until it formed into a planet. And the planet was like pinkish colors, and I don't remember dreaming in color before, and I could see like a ring around it. And for some, some reason in my dream, I, I, I believed that it was the planet Jupiter. And, and anyway, when I looked up, there was planets all around and there were stars and the sky was so beautifully lit. And as I looked around, I thought, wow, how beautiful. And then the dream ended. And I, I, I kept that dream in my heart and I don't know a year or two later I had the same 
exact dream again where I was looking up into the sky and there was just light and it began to get brighter and brighter and closer and closer and uh, until it became a plant just just like the other dream exactly like the other dream when I looked around it the sky was so beautiful and and I thought I, I need to share this with someone and I ran and I got my dad and I brought him back and I was showing him all that are beautiful I said is that beautiful and then in my dream God said, the meaning of the dream is, I will show you my glory. And immediately, I looked at my dad and I said, well, what is he doing here? Because you see, my dad had passed away by then. He was deceased. So, so it, it didn't make sense to me that he would be there. And, and God answered me in the dream. He said, that means that you will show it to the dead, the spiritually dead. And then, and then I woke up. You see, God had given me a promise. Then I shared that promise with my family. And we believe that God has called us for bigger things, for greater things. He, we, we believe that, 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 that it's more that we have to achieve. But I haven't shared these stories outside our family. This is the first time that I've, sh I've shared those stories. But I believe that this is the season to see God's glory. I believe that Jesus Christ is coming back real, real soon. I believe that we are living in the last, last seconds of this side of eternity. And whatever work that God has given us, whatever work Jesus has given us, we had better get it done. Whatever we're going to achieve, we need to achieve it now. Because remember, the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. But, you see, we can trust God to depend on His promises. Because His promises are not going to fail. But sometimes we have to fight for it. We have to battle for it. We have to reach out and we have to grab that by faith. So God's promises are faithful, they're true, and they're re reliable. I want you to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15 through 22. Because I was sure of this, I wanted to come to you first so that you might have a second experience of grace. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I vacillating when I wanted to do this? Do I make my plans according to the flesh, ready to say yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaim among you, Silvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always, and I want to repeat that, is always, always, always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. It is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us and who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. You see, all of God's promises are yea and amen. If he has promised you, you can believe and stand on the promises of God. You see, I've heard this from the time I got saved that, that some of God's promises are sometimes yes, Sometimes may be, and sometimes no. Well, that is not so. Paul has just cleared that up for us. Paul said that all, and what does that mean? That means all, everything, all inclusive. Every one of God's promises are yes and amen. It's not yes, it's not maybe, and sometimes no. It's always Always, Paul said, yes, 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 yes. All of his promises. He don't go say, okay, yes to you, but maybe to you and no to you. All of God's promises. All we got to do is to reach out and grab that by faith. 
by faith, we reach out and we receive the promises that God has for us. There is nothing in all under the heavens, in the heavens, under the earth, that can stop or prevent God's promises from, from coming true. Nothing can cancel His words. There will be obstacles standing in our way. There will be many roadblocks that we have to negotiate and we have to, 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 to try to maneuver through. But, but even if there are hindrances, no one can prevent it. The only person who can stop or prevent God's promises is you and I. We are the only ones who can prevent God's promises from coming through or coming true in our lives. So I want to ask you, do you have some personal promises that God gave to you? Well, if you do, I want to encourage you that although the road might be rough, although the walk might be tough, do not give up, do not give in, do not let the enemy defeat you. You can believe, you can stand on the promises of God. And I would like to pray for you. But first, I would like to invite all those people who do not know the Lord Jesus as their own personal Savior. I want to give you the opportunity to know Him, to receive Him, to receive His forgiveness, to receive eternal life. If that's you today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for your good promises that you have promised me. I ask you to give me the faith to receive those promises. I ask you to lead me in the paths of righteousness. Help me to hold on and to do what's right and to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do, as usual, buy yourself a Bible, buy yourself a highlighter, highlight those promises, and stand on those promises. Memorize those promises. Pray about those promises. Find yourself a Bible-believing church who still believes that there's a right way and there's a wrong way to live. Find that church and join that church. Be discipled in that church. Keep away from, from, from those progressive churches that believe that you can live any old way and that, that, that God loves you anyway and, and that, that you can live. Join a Bible-believing church that believes in right and wrong. Be discipled in that church. And when the Lord Jesus comes back, He'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. And He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. He'll take you to be with Him forever and ever and ever. And that's what our ultimate goal is. Now, if God has given you a promise, let me pray for you. Father, I lift up each and every promise that you have promised these people. Everyone, Lord God. I ask you to renew the faith. Renew the belief. Lord, help each one to gravitate and hold on to the promise that you have given them. In the name of Jesus Christ and by His authority, I come against every hindrance spirit, every spirit of denial, every spirit that, that, of infirmity. I come against you in the name of Jesus and I rebuke you. I speak life into people. I speak life into dreams. I speak life into promises by the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By whose anointing we stand here. Now, Lord God, let your blessings rest upon each one. Cover each one in your blood. Give your angels charge over them. Help them to see the good promises that you have promised come to pass. And let them enjoy what you have for them. Good things, blessings, prosperity in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it 
We really appreciate it. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.